You'll probably be able to tell in my voice I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold or something. I don't think I'm getting really sick. Well, I probably just jinxed myself. But I can definitely feel something is there. So I was drinking some green tea. I had a big bowl of spinach, some broccoli, trying to get some micronutrients in. That's the thing about if it fits your macros. You know, you can eat whatever you want, but you still got to hit your micros and get all the nutrients that your body needs. So to end the night, I'm just going to finish it off with a bowl of oatmeal and then some egg substitute to get some extra protein in. And that is really going to be about it. I mean, that is all that's in the bowl for now. What could possibly make me feel better than all of this? And this is going to be interesting. I'm going to try to add ice cream to oatmeal. I don't know that I've ever seen this done before, but when you have a little bit of a cold, you got to have ice cream, you know? And then we're going to add three of the three Musketeers bars. For some reason, this is like the best candy bar to add to oatmeal. It just melts perfectly. And then some Chex Mix Muddy Buddies. One of my favorite foods in the entire world, Charleston Chews. And this is random. I used to hate Peeps back in the day, but someone gave me these chocolate Peeps and they're really good. And they're only 14 calories per Peep. I think that's what it says on the bag or something. So I'm going to have a few of those, some Reese Cups, and then I'm going to add that to the boring old oatmeal. I tried to keep it healthy, guys. I really did have good intentions. Baby, baby, I just got one simple This is just awesome, but it has to be the most unhealthy bowl of oatmeal in the entire world. I was so close to being clean. So I learned my lesson not to mock what I think is just going to be a little cold. I don't know what I had, swine flu, herpes, whatever it was, I was down for a few days. But I'm back, feeling a lot better, ready to take on the world. Moving into this bench press session, you're going to notice I'm doing 10 sets of 3 reps. They're supposed to be speed reps. I know that they don't look all that speedy, but it is something that I'm working on. It's still a lot quicker than my traditional bench press. Obviously, these are touch and go rather than pause. And this whole 10 sets of 3 is something I stole from who else? Brandon Campbell. And I know I talk a lot about this old guy on my channel, but I feel like if I steal something from someone, I should at least give them credit. And you also notice that the way I put the clips together, well, you might not know this, but I stole that from him as well. So he, I think his was a deadlift session where he kept the rest periods in there and just sped it up just so you guys can kind of get some perspective on how much rest I was taking, which wasn't much. I think I completed all 10 sets in under 15 minutes, so I was moving at a pretty good pace. But then again, it is only 185 pounds, so there's not much that I really need to recover from. I know that there's some debate on whether or not speed work is effective. There's not a whole lot of research on it out there. But like Brandon was saying, if nothing else, just use it as some active recovery. You're still going to get some more bench volume in. But I do think that it's pretty effective, and just from my anecdotal experience in the last probably five to eight weeks I have been utilizing a little bit of it this is gonna be the first time I'm doing 10 sets so we're gonna see how it goes here and I'll keep you guys updated I mean what more can I say about this bench press how long is this clip gonna drag on guys I'm getting kind of hungry it's almost nine o'clock and I have not eaten dinner because I'm so focused on getting this commentary out for you so hopefully I can get through these next three reps because there's only so much filler talk I can put into one clip and I'm sure you guys are thinking about hitting the X button but if you do you're gonna miss some cool stuff at the end of the video so now we're gonna move in to something different the floor press and the one thing I don't like about this is that I'm laying on the floor and overall my gym is very clean but there's no gym in the United States of America with a clean floor. So the fact that I just have my body sprawled out across it is a little bit disgusting. But other than that, I really like the floor press. And I was not sold on it initially. 
I didn't know how much translation it was going to have into my actual competition bench. But it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. My bench is going up. And I think the reason that this is effective for me is because it's right around my sticking point. And weak point training is something I'm starting to play around with more and more. You guys will hear about that in some upcoming videos as I implemented some pause deadlifts, which I'm loving. But I will save that for that video. And after the floor press, I moved on to some pull-ups. You guys have probably figured out that I put pull-ups in almost every program just because it's one of my favorite back movements and just to keep things interesting, I change up the variation, the hand positioning. I'm not overly concerned with muscular development or muscular balance, I should say. So if I'm not hitting the right part of the back, it's not a huge concern to me. And then we moved on to some rear delts just for some shoulder health. At least that's what the science gurus tell me. I don't know. I just take what they're saying, and it might be marketing, but they are smarter people than me. So nothing too interesting here. Afterwards, I moved in to some overhead tricep extensions. I haven't done these in a long while, but I figured it would be good to get in some overhead work. You'll notice that this was not the right bench to use for this. I kept hitting the dumbbell on the back of the bench, but that is all right. And that is going to be the end of the workout. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like the video if you did. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I know this wasn't overly exciting, but I hope you still got some kind of information out of it. It's finally time to go eat, and I hope that you guys enjoy the food. I am too hungry to even be recording this right now, so it's gonna be quick, but one thing I wanna improve on on this channel is making sandwiches. I never show you guys really good sandwiches, and that is all about to change starting right now, so what I've got over here is some steak. I need to flip it, and then I'll show you where we're going from there. You guys probably cannot even tell what this is, but on top of the steak, I put some roast beef, some cheese, of course I had to have a nice healthy serving of ricotta. We got an egg, ah, some peppers, and then all we gotta do is put it all together. So you can either make a sandwich or you can make a manwich, and I do not think I need to distinguish which one this is, but it's very important how you layer this. You gotta put the piece with the ricotta in the middle. Look at that, just oozing out, so you're gonna get it in every single bite. All right guys, finally time to eat. I can already tell you that there will be more where that came from, but that is going to conclude the video, so I appreciate you guys checking it out. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys next time.